Halo Infinite's campaign is finally out after a long, long wait. Earlier on in the year, I played the original trilogy on my Series S, and I absolutely loved them. And to say I was excited for this game is an understatement. We all know Halo's gameplay lends itself to a sandbox, so I couldn't wait to see what would happen when it was actually in an open world sandbox. I was cautious going into this, and to be honest, it hasn't really gripped me. I think it has a few issues that gets in the way of me having loads of fun. Now, I do think when it comes to co-op, I'll come back to it, but here are my impressions after about 5 hours. So the campaign opens with this really cool cutscene with Master Chief, and eventually Echo 216 rescues him. And Master Chief is just really badass, and I think his cliche character really shined in these cutscenes. Mostly because he was frozen in space, and within a couple of seconds he was already out looking for a status report. And I think this opening mission just shows how strong a linear Halo campaign can be. It's just really epic, and you run around with a grappling hook swinging from platform to platform as a ship blows up while you're inside it. It's absolutely amazing, and I think it highlights my main issue with this game. So obviously you move to an open world style. And the open world has plenty of Breath of the Wild moments, like you go out and you see the Vista, and it's cool. And at the start I was having a lot of fun in the open world. But then you soon realise that it's all the exact same things. The majority of the missions I've done now are go to a banished outpost and destroy, like their fuel tanks or destroy their anti-air cannons or stuff like that, or go destroy their mining operation. And after that you go into the Forerunner structures, which are all very similar on the inside, and you just run from point A to B, grab a power cell, put it in something, open a door, there might be like an extra hard enemy at the end of the fight, but I think it's really jarring the difference between the two. So when you go from the open world into a mission, there's like this weird movement to cutscene because the cutscenes move from first person to third person seamlessly. So when you enter a room, you your camera could be here, but the cutscene doesn't start here. So you enter the room here and then the camera will like pan weirdly and then go into the cutscene and it's really jarring. And on top of that, when you go into these areas, there's like a weird loading thing. Sometimes it fades to black, and then it loads for a while, and then you finally go up to where the mission is. Other times you're like going up a lift or something like that. I think the difference here is quite jarring. And now don't get me wrong, the open world is fun. Like I had plenty of fun moments, with, especially with the grappling hook. Like there was one part where I wanted to get around the mountain, and I was up really high. And if I wanted to go down, it would have taken me a while. So instead all I did was, I just jumped off the mountain and grappled onto the side. I was like web swinging basically around the mountain and it was really cool and grappling towards enemies and charging up your punch is really fun but i don't think it's enough to keep me coming back basically i think the missions feel very samey and the open world objectives feel samey but that's just open world games full stop and the grappling hook can only carry the game so far obviously the guns feel really fun the enemies are fun to shoot but the game didn't launch with co-op, and that is a massive, massive issue, especially with this game. If this game launched with co-op, it probably would have been my favourite campaigns of the year, because I can only imagine how fun this will be running around with a friend. And that's why I'm going to put the game down for now. I think the missions are just a bit meh. Same objectives, things like that. And then the open world is very samey. So far, there's been like three or four different things. Outposts, which are like the things in Far Cry. You just go to an outpost, kill the enemies, you know, you liberate it. There's fobs, which act as fast travel locations there's like targets of interest which give you unique weapons and then the odd marine squad that you'd go around and you'd save and i think for now they're just not gripping enough as a single player experience but when co-op launches next year i'm definitely going to pick it up and play through it because i just think co-op would make this an absolutely amazing game personally what i think i would have preferred they did was they made a normal halo campaign with linear missions mission from mission cool cutscenes in between and then they made this open world, obviously they would have had to make it smaller, but they make a smaller open world, have that as like a side co-op mode. I think that would have worked a lot better, because I think melding the two together is quite jarring. I always felt like that as well in games like Far Cry. Now in Far Cry you rarely go into, like load into buildings to do missions, but even the difference between the open world gameplay and the missions, I always felt to be quite strange and I disliked doing the missions most of the time, because it kind of just broke up the game in a weird way. So I think you either need one or the other. Anyway, I was really hoping this campaign would grip me, but it just isn't the case. When co-op comes out, I'll go back to it. But as for right now, I don't plan on finishing it. Now, obviously, if you have Game Pass, just download and try it for yourself. Like, it's only going to be an hour or two that you're going to waste and figure out if you like it or not. As for paying €70 or $80 on it, obviously, I haven't finished it, so I don't really want to answer that question. Just subscribe to Game Pass for €1 Euro for your first three months if you haven't already signed up. And just give it a go. I really appreciate you watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe, join the Discord, and follow me on Twitter down below. 
Let me know what you think of Halo and what other first person shooters you would like me to play because I do plan on playing a lot of them next year. I've actually just finished Crisis 1 and I'm playing Crisis 2 right now. So thank you for watching and I'll see you all on the next video.